Green Shane? Yes, sir. Your Honor, at this time, and I know that we've had previous um, motions on this matter to exclude this witness, but at this time the defense would request a mistrial. Uh, it has become evident and clear that Martha Jane Barton has broken the rule of sequestration, and she has watched court TV and various apps and YouTube, uh, and she has, it has controlled what testimony that she is about to testify to today. She has seen every bit of this trial, and she is going to come forth, and she is going to so taint this trial in front of that jury that my client cannot receive a fair trial. She is so prejudiced that we cannot overcome it. So at this point, Your Honor, I would simply ask for a mistrial. Right. Judge, uh, I think you've already ruled on this. It's not, uh, if there is a violation, first of all, she was on each party's witness list. Uh, she was never subpoenaed by either party. There was an informal agreement that if we needed her, um, she could testify by Zoom. No one um, technically did anything to make her a witness. She was mentioned. So I don't think she's in a technical violation of the rule of sequestration, but I trust that she's going to be so candid and authentic when she testifies. I'm, I'm not concerned about the court charging however the court would like. Uh, I think any motion for a mistrial is, is not right. And also, as the court has already discussed and, and entertained and heard the law, that any type of violation of the rule of sequestration would go to the weight and credibility of the witness and would not go to the miscibility. I understand that the defense does not want Martha Jane to testify in front of this jury, and I clearly understand the uh, concern that they have with that, but that ultimately would be a question for the jury and not for the parties. I think we established previously that no one actually had subpoenaed her um, is that correct? That's why we didn't subpoena her. And no one, and, and no one specifically gave her any instruction on what she could or could not do as far as watching any of the events. To my knowledge, no, Your Honor, but I can put her under oath and we could ask her also. Uh, you, well, well, that's probably a good idea. Let's do that. Uh, Ms. Martha, would you, you can stay seated. Don't, don't get up. Raise your right hand if you would, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to present in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Um, Ms. Martha, state your full name for the record. Martha Jane Barton. Uh, we're going to ask you some preliminary questions, not going into the other stuff, but uh, in all fairness, the judge and the, and the attorneys would like to know, did you ever receive a subpoena in this case? No. No one served you with any documents or anything? No. I think you talked to our office with Ms. Frankish one time over the phone. I did. A couple of weeks beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, outside of that, did you talk to any of the defense attorneys? No. And did you uh, hear from anyone else in the case about about this case prior to trial? I have not. That's all I have to say. There you go. All right. Um, okay, any additional argument, Ms. Weaver? Uh, additional argument. As this issue of having to be under subpoena for sequestration, I don't think the law is actually clear on that, so we do not accept that that is what we must follow. Uh, of course, that can be taken up in another court at a different time, but we still, of course, object um, to that premise by the court. And furthermore, if, if she is allowed to testify, we are requesting, and we need to put this on the record, we are requesting a charge to read to the jury before her testimony, letting letting the jury know that she broke the rule of sequestration and she has watched this trial and you are to determine the weight and the credibility of the witness. Right. Judge may I reply? Uh, no, that's all right. Um, <clears throat> she was a potential witness, a named witness, but was never served a subpoena. Um, it probably would have been best for her to receive some instruction to not watch the proceedings, although I don't know that that is another issue that none of us have gone through before and maybe next time we will do it a little bit differently and but there was definitely no um, intentional violation by the state that would justify a mistrial. Um, I'm not inclined to grant a curative instruction or anything saying that she violated any rule of sequestration since she was not informed 
that she could not uh, contact anyone or watch the proceedings or anything. I will let y'all cross-examine her to the extent that y'all wish to about any or all of that. Uh, and I'm not going to restrict any of that. Y'all can ask her any questions about any anything that she's seen or where she got her information from or any of that stuff uh, is fair game. But I think it's appropriate for Cross. Y'all can ask her that she knew that she could potentially be a, as a witness and that if, whether or not she thought it was a good idea to watch it or you know, any of that kind of stuff, I think it's fair game. Judge, we've learned from this too because we notified the ones on our list that we provide the defense about not contacting and anything outside of that. I haven't instructed a single witness as they left the stand to not watch the proceedings on, so, and I probably should have done that. So, so um, anyway, we'll, we'll do it all differently maybe next time we have one of these. All right, anything else? That's all, right. All right, bring them in. Just, just for the record, I will re swear in. Yes, that's fine. <laughs> And ma'am, you can just scoot up just a little bit. You don't have to lean into the microphone. It'll get you if you just stay about that distance. I mean, there's a Bible over there if you want to use it on the corner. Oh, okay. Hi, Mr. Focus, go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. This time, the state calls Martha Jane Barton. Ms. Barton, you can remain seated. Just raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear from that the evidence you're about to present in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Put your hand down. Ms. Martha, I want you to get comfortable. I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions, and when I'm done, the defense counsel is going to ask you questions. I think it's going to be Mr. Ray that's going to ask questions. Um, if you can't hear what we say or anything like that, just let me know, okay? Okay. Tell us, Jerry, your full name for us, please. Martha Jane Barton. And spell your name for us, if you would, please. B is in boy. A-R-T-O-N. And don't give me your address, but tell me the city you're from. Tullahoma, Tennessee. You're going to have to spell Tullahoma for us. <laughs> <laughs> T-U-L-L-A-H-O-M-A. 
Uh, Ms. Martha, tell the jury about how big of a city Tullahoma is. It's about 18,000, maybe a few more. And uh, how old are you today? 84. 84. How long have you lived in Tullahoma? Practically all my life. Do you consider it your home? Oh, yes. Now, if I asked you how many people in Tullahoma you know, how many do you think you know? Well, not as many as I used to, but uh, I'm sure to come out. I worked at a bank, the same bank, for over 53 years. And growing up there, I know quite a few. And if I don't know the person, I probably know their parents and grandparents. Now, t Tullahoma, how many, how many stoplights and things like that? Do they have big stores, little oh, stores? We, we're growing. <laughs> we have, um, yeah, we have several stoplights, and what, we're growing in with stores that we have uh, a Publix, okay. Hobby Lobby, Marshalls, Alta. We have a Ross. Um, you have an Aldi's? An Aldi. Okay. Of course, Croker's. And, uh, and several banks. Several banks. <laughs> now, is it my understanding that you like purses and shoes? Who told you that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Okay. What type of brand of purses do you like? Um, I guess I have more Michael Kors, but I have... <laughs> you have a lot? <laughs> yeah, I have a lot. I have too many. Yeah. Now, is uh, when you're in Tullahoma, do you, do you have an opportunity to go out much these days? Or Not you... now. For about, well, with COVID, and then since then I've had a lot of health issues, and so I'm don't get to go out. Would you just tell the jury about, I, I know you have some heart issues, What? just briefly, what kind of heart issues have you had? I'm going to ask you some questions later on, but just tell uh, us about that. Open heart surgery with aorta valve replacement, and um, then about a week later I had to have a pacemaker put in, and I still have heart issues. I have another valve that's giving me problems now. I've had COVID twice. Since then, I've developed um, COPD and emphysema, and that's why my voice is like it is. I also have macular degeneration and have to have injections in my eyes. Okay. Um, did you take your medicine today? Pardon? Did you take your medicine today? I did. All right. If I, if I start get going too fast, sometimes I get going fast, just raise your hand and I'll slow down, all right? Okay. Tell, tell me, what kind of education do you have? One year of college. What did you study in college? Well, actually, I meant to study psychology in this first year. I didn't. And then I quit and went to work at the bank. The, um, we were neighbors to the people that back then, you know, they owned the bank. And uh, so one day I was in there and the president of the bank asked me if I'd like a job. Uh -huh. So I took the job and what, stayed. When you started working at the bank, what kind of job did you start with and what did you end up doing? Oh, well back then you started posting accounts. And uh, I don't, what's posting accounts? I don't know what that means. Well, checks and deposits, the people's checks okay. and their deposits. and. Uh, Every, all the accounts or the uh, everything was done like a ledger, like A's and B's and C's and D's, like that. So, like a, would, a book ledger, old paper ledger. Oh no, you had a cardboard, uh, uh, well, a heavy uh, piece of paper that you'd put down in the machine, and so you would put in the checks to take off and add the deposits. And then I went from that to running the proof machine, which um, a proof proved, machine? Uh -huh, which oh. proves the work that goes through. Okay. Then I 
started as teller. Then I went to being over all the tellers and over the vault. Uh, went then to doing just CDs and IRAs. And then the last, I think, 16 years, I was a branch manager. Okay, you managed the bank? Mm. Did you enjoy that? I did. Did you like working at the bank? I did. I like being with people. Are you a people person? I am. Now, did you work, you said, 53 years at the bank? Is that pretty much the, the main place that you worked? Um, we, well, I started out at the old building. They built a new one. <clears throat> and then after that, I went down to the branch. So actually, I worked in three different buildings. How many people kind of were, were employed when you started, and how many, how many people did it grow to the bank? Oh, we started out with probably 10 or so, maybe 12. And there's probably, there were over 40 when I left. Did you know them all? I did. <laughs> That's how I know how to tell them. <laughs> they have worked at the bank at but, one time or another. They come in and see you. Now, I, do you go by Martha Jane sometimes too? Mostly Martha. Yeah, Martha Jane's fine. Okay. Now, I've heard that you go by something else. I just told, Ms. Monica told me this morning, and I, I think I caught it yesterday when we were talking, but is it, do you go by Marty also? Marty. Okay. Is that, uh, how do you distinguish when someone calls you Martha Jane versus Marty? What, is, what does that mean Martha to you? Martha Jane is the people that I knew a long, long time ago, family. Okay. When my nephew was born and he just turned 59, and his mother and daddy referred to me as Aunt Martha or Aunt Martha Jane. He started calling me Marnie. And so really for about 13 years, his sister wasn't born until he was almost 13. And um, he wouldn't let anybody else call me Marnie. He said, she's my Marnie, not yours. So then when his sister was born, he let her call me that. And so then, well, Roy and I had already married, and then when the grandchildren came along, I insisted that they call me Marnie. Now, has some people referred to you as MJ? You ever heard that? Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to probably call you Miss Martha, if that's okay. Yeah, it's okay. All right. Uh, what church do you go to? Church of Christ. How big is that? How, how big is the congregation? About 175. And uh, is this a church where it's a lot of family and people you relate to? No. no. Get... A few, but not really. It's it's church family. At, at one point, did Rusty go there? He did. Yeah, we know who Rusty is. So yes. I'm going to refer to, to Roy mm -hmm. Barton Jr. as Rusty. Mm -hmm. Now... When it comes to to your health, did you have to have some surgeries, open heart surgery? I did. In 2014. In 2014? Mm hmm Where'd you go to get that done? St. Thomas, Nashville. How'd they do? How'd they do with that? <coughs> Was it good? Oh, yeah. It turned yeah. And except uh, for having to have the pacemaker put in. And, and uh, but your day-to-day -day life is, is now is, is kind of the same since you retired. You just try to take it easy. Very. No, you don't set an alarm clock. Miss <laughs> Martha, are you senile? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> how's how's your memory these days? Well, I went to my doctor about three months ago. And I thought I was having trouble remembering names. Uh-huh. And these were people's names that I had known years ago, and I'd think of them. And so when I went in, I told the nurse that I wanted some memory pills. And she said, well, he'll give you a memory test. Well, she actually did it. And it was 30 questions. And he came in the room and he said, Martha, 
why did you want that? You aced the test. <laughs> so I said, well, I can't remember names. And he said, well, you're not around people. And these were people, I said, I was paid to remember names. And he said, uh, well, those were people that you were in contact with every day. So he helped my feelings. <laughs> Good. Uh, who is, I want to talk about your, your late husband. Okay. And I know I like to talk about him. I know you do like to talk about Mr. Roy. So let's talk about Mr. Roy. Roy Barton Sr., if you would just tell the jury when you met him, what year was that? I had known him. My sister had worked with him several years before. And in 1975, I went to a class reunion <clears throat> and he was there with another girl. And uh, I promise you, <laughs> I did not flirt with him. I did not, I don't even know, I mean, I know I spoke to him. But then that was on a Saturday night. Sunday afternoon, he called me. And my first thing, no, 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 you know, you're going with someone else. And he assured me that they weren't in any permanent, steady, engaged relationship. He wasn't going steady with her, huh? No, but I still wouldn't um, go out. I said no. So he told me that he had come home talking about me and Rusty, who I had known since he was a little boy because of coming in the bank, had said, Daddy, call Martha. And then he said, he just left, and he said, don't forget to call Martha. Well, I thought, well, if he said it was okay, you know, it was okay. But we still, he came out to my house and we talked on the phone for two or three weeks. What, what year did y'all get married? 70, we married in 75. 75, how old? Oh yeah, when we got started, <laughs> he was very pushy about, he proposed and. How, how long were y'all married? Almost 39 years. And how old was Rusty when y'all he married. was a 22 or 23. And did Rusty live with y'all in the beginning? He did. And Rusty is, is, is he, I guess technically your stepson, but are you close to him? I am. Do you love him? I do. He's been very good to me. Are you, how's it going to be when you have to talk to him again? I don't know. Not looking forward to that? I'm not. I'm not. Now, I want to ask you some question. Uh, Melody Walker-Ferris here, do you see her in court today? I do. Do you love her? I do. I want to ask you some things about her. Um, but can you tell the jury, I think you've described it as uh, you were from a, a small family. What's that mean when you were from small? When it relates uh, to how you take Kay Walker and the and uh, Melody. How's that work? My mother only had one brother, and uh, my daddy didn't have any children, uh, brothers and sisters. So, mother's brother had one daughter, who was Melody's mother. That's Kay Walker? Kay. Right. She was my only first cousin. And we were very close. Very, very close. I loved her like a sister. Was there a time that you and uh, were living and Kay and Melody came to the house and lived a little bit? Or, was, or not, Melody, not in your house, but was did y'all, did Kay live with your family at some point? No. Okay. Um, and was there a time that uh, even when when you were older that you would spend time with Melody? Oh yes, um, 
when I first started working at the bank, well, I didn't marry until I was 35. So when uh, Melody was born, I was 20. And then when they moved to Nashville, the bank would be closed on Thursday. So very often I would go down on Wednesday night and stay on Thursday with them. And sometimes they'd even go for the weekend. Miss Martha, do you like Willie Nelson? <laughs> I do. Uh, when's the last time you saw Willie Nelson in concert? When Melody came and took me to see him in Atlanta. Do you remember, what year, that, remember what year that was? It was probably 2017, 28. Uh, Gary hadn't died. Was it a good concert? Oh, yes. Uh, would y'all do things like that often? Just go and do something? No, stuff? that's. That's the only time we ever went to a concert. And who went with you to that one? Was it just you and Melody or? Uh-huh, Amanda and Chad, and then a friend of, it was a couple that was a friend of theirs. Okay. Amanda, her daughter, and Chad Bruce, her mm -hmm. now husband? Mm-hmm. How would you describe the defendant's, excuse me, Melody's, I apologize, Melody's energy level? <laughs> She was like my mama, my grandmother, which had been her great grandmother. How she, so? Mama was never still, and Melody wasn't. She, you know, she worked. She kept a good house. Her her yard was southern living, and uh, when she would come up to my house, she would do things for me. What type of things? Um, she brought her power washer and washed the patio, the front uh, sidewalk. She did the um, all my patio furniture. She repainted it. She helped me clean out. We have a separate garage, and she helped. We got a dumpster, and she helped me clean that out after my husband died. Melody's family, right? She is family. Would you uh, welcome her into, could she come into your house even when you weren't there? Oh yeah. She did she have a key to your house? She did. Did you, did you try to limit her access to your house in any way? No, she was very good to come up at, uh, my husband had had one stroke and he got better from that. He had, but he also was diagnosed with Parkinson's. And um, then he he had several sick spells and where he'd be in and out of the hospital. And uh, then he had a second stroke and had to go to the hospital and never came back. But she came and took me to Nashville for my doctor's appointments and um, my cardiologist in Tallahoma arranged for me to have as many things done in Tallahoma as I could. He knew the situation. I had been a patient of his, my mother and my husband had. And, um, so for convenience sake, but for those things that I had to have done, she took me to Nashville for that. Because of her energy level, did you ever say to her she needed to get her thyroid check? I did. She was the Energizer Bunny. Does she like to clean? She does. How, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the most immaculate, loves to clean, and one being as dirty as you can be, where would you put her on her, her uh, ten and a half? <laughs> now, did you know Gary Ferris? I did. What did you think about him? I like Gary. How many years did you know him? Well, since I got married. 
So about 38 or so? Uh-huh. Uh, we, you know, we went to, for periods of time that we weren't around them as often, but um, we went down for when Chris and Scott was born. Of course, then they moved to Birmingham, and during that period, we didn't see them as often. But um, no, I was very fond of Gary. Was Gary good to you, bad to you, or something else? He was always nice. He he came to Tullahoma to visit us a few times. Uh, of course, she came more, but no, he came too. How would you describe how Melody felt about Gary? In later years, they were distant. Ms. Martha, let me ask you a little bit more straightforward. How would you describe the word, what would you do, use to describe her heart her heart feelings towards Gary at the end of their marriage? There was no love there. When Melody would come see you in Tullahoma, would she stay with you or somewhere else? She stayed with me as far as I know. How much did you see her uh, interact with Rusty? I didn't. Um, you know, when Roy was in the hospital, there would be times that he would be sicker and she would, you know, with my health, this was before surgery, mm -hmm. she would say, you know, you go on home and I'll stay and uh, a little while and Rusty would be there. Did you know about them? No. And I'm not, I'm not going to ask you anything more Okay. Now, I think you were able to talk to uh, law enforcement twice in this case, is that right? Yes. Were you able to go back and listen to, I want you to listen to those recordings. Did you listen I, to those? I did. Um, did you remember much of what was said in or did you forgotten some of it? After I heard it, I remembered. I didn't before. Do you remember when the, I think was the first law enforcement that came out and talked to you, was it the TBI? It was. How were they? I think that was July 6th of 2018. I don't know what date, but they came. Would it be? At, uh, it was at night. After it, what yes. was going on with Gary? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. tell, just tell the jury, how were they with you? They were very nice. Uh, they mostly asked personal things, mm -hmm. you know. Was a, do you remember it was a, a tall, uh, a short guy about my size and a tall lady. Do you remember them? I do. Do you remember their names? I didn't no, remember names. I do not remember their names. Were they mean to you? No. I'm just asking. <laughs> now, when you talk they to were them, kind of, I, <laughs> go ahead. No, they weren't mean. Were, I, I mean, were you nervous? I was nervous. <laughs> you ever talked to law enforcement like that before? Uh. In the bank, a lot of times, or I wouldn't say a lot of times, but very, uh, on occasion, we would have an officer, an FBI agent come in and flip his badge over to you to ask something, and it was like, yes, sir, you know, what can I do for you? Now, you were a little hesitant to talk to law enforcement about what happened to Gary, what you knew? I was. Tell the jury why you were hesitant. I had been told 
that an attorney had said, told me not to talk. Who specifically told you not to talk to law Melody told me that the attorney told her. But did you end up talking to them? Did you talk to them when they were there? I did. Did you know any facts or details what had happened to Gary the first time you talked to the team? No. Did anyone tell you facts and details about what had happened at that time? What I, they told me what I suggested wasn't true. And what, what at that time did you know? When you I talked? knew that he had died in a burn pile. Did you know anything about a bullet? No. Now, did Rusty give you information? No. Mm. Did? Not. No, not then. And did you talk in, to, in detail with Rusty about what happened? No. Did you talk in detail with Melody about what happened? She would cut, not really in detail. No, not, I never asked the details because she insinuated that they, you know, he just found him. So I thought that was, I believed her. You had no other reason to, you no. had no other evidence, right? No. Mm -mm. Just this time on the tender evidence states uh, M. Barton 1 through 16, if there's no objection. All the exhibits. All right. Amen. Ms. Martha Jane, I'm going to put up on this is something that you provided us very recently. Can you see this? Can you read it? Uh, let me give you a. You know, may I approach Ms. Martha? I can see it here. You can see it. Please. Oh, yeah. Let me give this. It may be easier. Now, this is a piece of paper that you, you gave to us. Is that right? Right. They had asked me the Cherokee people had asked me about the phone calls and um, I had told so I went back on my phone, it's there, and uh, looked back to see when I had got when the dates that we had talked. And uh, this, I went back to July the 4th. Because that that first one? I had absolutely I had no idea that it happened the 3rd. So I went back on the 4th. And uh, on that first occasion, I had called her about a recipe. Hobo beans? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know if you drained the beans or not. I was going to make it to take to a church that on July the 4th. They were going to do hot dogs and hamburgers, and we were going to take sides. Okay. So I thought, well, that'll be a good recipe, but I didn't know if you needed to drain the beans, and that was my conversation. And then these are the other dates that you then found. Then these were the other. She had called on the fifth twice. Okay. And that was from her phone, and then the sixth. She called me from Jackie's phone. All right. And then the six from Amanda, six from Jackie. All right. Seventh, twice on the seventh from Jackie, twice on the eighth from Amanda, and on the ninth from Amanda. All right. And then you put this down on, I wrote just, on the back of, of one of your I boxes. I ordered stuff, something, like. hadn't I? Imagine that. Uh, but uh, I did this because they had asked, and I didn't know if they'd come back. And of course, the phone doesn't hold that forever. Now, because of rules of evidence and things like that, we we tend to listen to the recordings and things like that. But I noticed that. Uh, 
You remember when the TBI was there on July 6th and July, the first time you talked to them? Uh -huh. When they were leaving, you asked somebody about, you asked them, did they know a Jason? Remember that? I did. Who's Jason? He's an investigator for Coffee County. I know him. I know his mother. I know his grandparents. I know his aunt and uncle. And so you just had I just said, Do you know Jason? Denby. Dendy. And uh oh yeah, they knew him. They know. Now on I believe July tenth of twenty eighteen, the second date, after you talked to the TBI uh, some detectives from Cherokee County, Georgia, came out and talked to you. Do you remember they that? They did. I, they did. Do you remember Detective Hayes? I, I remember the name. Remember Pope and Hayes? I do. What was what was Detective Pope like? Well, he was nice. <laughs> <laughs> did you have a good conversation? I thought so. Were you still under the same impression that you weren't supposed to be talking to him? I was. Did you talk to him about I did. You didn't know much more details though? Oh, I didn't know anything else. Now, I want to ask you, and it's okay, I want you to just tell the jury, have you been watching the trial on TV? I don't get up until about 10 in the morning. And you all are an hour ahead of us, so I would usually start about, now this was, well, first of all, your office called me and asked me some questions and told me, or asked me if I knew the trial was starting. I, I that was a shock. Okay. I did not know that. So that, that's the way I knew it was going to be on, but I didn't know. You're talking about weeks before the trial when we talked? Call right, me. Okay. right. Well, then someone called me and told me I didn't know about court TV, and they told me. So I looked and looked and finally found. That may not even have been the first day. Uh, How did you look? I have a Kindle. And I, well, that, I, well, I Googled. Well, Miss Martha, that's not true, is it? You don't have a Kindle. How many Kindles you got? Well, I have two. <laughs> <laughs> I have two of everything. <laughs> did you bring the two with you? I did. To read? Uh -huh. All right. So you go did you Google it or something? I Googled um, Court TV, Melody Walker Ferris, Cherokee County, and there was I finally found, and I don't even know what the first was, and like I said, this would have been after 10 o'clock. How, how much of the trial have you, no. I, we, I did, and then I, let's see, this is the third week, is it? Yes, ma'am. Oh. Uh, I didn't watch any after I talked to you all. Talking about this, last week? Yeah. Did we tell you to stop watching? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, up to that point, had anybody told you not to watch it? No. Okay. Mm -mm. And did you see Rusty testify? I saw part of his testimony. How did that make you feel? Disappointed. After seeing Rusty testify, did you make a phone call to Cherokee County? I did. How did you, who who did you call? Well, I Googled <laughs> uh, Cherokee County Detention Center, and it came up three names, sheriff and their number. I don't remember the second, and then the criminal investigator, and I called that number. <clears throat> How were you feeling when you called that number? Awful. I had a heavy, heavy heart. Did you sleep the night before? I have worried about this for a long time. Do you remember who you, I, I think that was last Friday, October 18th, is that when you called? 
today Friday. I believe so. I believe it was a week ago today. Now I have around, around 10 o'clock our time, so it'll be about 9 o'clock your time. Mm -hmm. Is that about, about right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember who you talked to at the sheriff's office? Uh, Detective Hand. Hand? Mm -hmm. Hand, thank you. <laughs> now, how was he to you? He was very nice. He told me his name. I didn't even tell him my name. I just, I think I started out with, I have a heavy heart. And then I told him that I had a gun that was missing. And then well, he, let me let he me asked talk me my name. Yes, ma'am. Let me let me talk to you about some guns. I, I want to talk about now. Roy Senior was a jokester, wasn't he? Yes. Um, I want to turn your attention. I believe, and you tell me if it's not right or if it's around that time. I want to turn your attention to. Well, before I get there, did you buy? Uh, Mr. Roy, a certain type of pistol. I did. I bought him a 357 Magnum. Do you remember what year you bought that pistol for him? Mm, no. Uh, no, I don't. It, do you remember? It would have been. What decade are we dealing with? It would have been probably in the 19 early 80s. Okay. You remember where you got it from? No, probably, but I don't remember exactly. We had a gun shop out of Winchester, which was a neighboring town. Uh, a Ray Judge that everybody went and bought guns from. And uh, so you men have a way of hinting and telling what you want. This was the second gun that I had bought there for him. And the first, I got my uncle, Melody's grandfather, to go with me to buy a Remington, I should know, I knew 1100, I think. You dove hunt with it. Okay. And you can skeet shoot with it. Now, did Mr. Roy like to hunt? Oh, yes. Uh, yes. What kind of hunt did he like to do? Well, turkey, dove, deer. Uh, when he was growing up, squirrels and rabbits. Uh, did he and Rusty ever go hunting together? They did. He went to, they dove hunted every year. They deer hunted, turkey hunted, and then they made three trips to Canada, black bear and caribou. You told me yesterday, I think, well, the first time was yesterday, the first time you and I ever met in person. Yes. Mm -hmm. And was I nice to you? Was I nice to you? You were very nice. Okay. And uh, you told me about Mr. Roy had a long shot one time. What was that? Oh, it was over 600 yards for a caribou. Where was that at? In Maryland country? In Newfoundland. Now, at some point, now I want to turn your attention to, I believe, Maybe 1979 at Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to Mr. Roy being a kind of a kid or a, a jokester, did you get a unique Christmas gift that year? I did. Was Rusty there? Yes. Uh, so first of all, tell us how y'all how you would celebrate Christmas with a different family. What was y'all's procedure? Christmas Eve we celebrated with Roy's mother and daddy, and then on Sunday before Christmas we would celebrate with his children and then as they had grandchildren or had children and then on Christmas Day with my family. And this particular year, um, Roy gave me, and he had gone and wrapped this, I know he took the paper and his mother's, because my Christmas presents were wrapped that matched the tree. And uh, this was this red and white paper. And he gave me the box, and it was heavy. And I opened it up, and there was a gun on top, but there was a brick in the box. And he had the gun, 
Well, of course, he had to tell me what kind it was. Okay, what kind of gun was it? It was a thirty-eight special, and he said it was called a Saturday night special. Saturday night. Was it a long barrel or short barrel? Short. How short? Oh, it was this, it was, it was very short, and he told me that I could use it. It was for my protection. And when you got the gun, did Mr. Roy do anything else with the bullets? He had rolled up $100 bills, and they were rolled up about like a toothpick and stuck in each cartridge. And, of course, he joked that that's the only way he could get away giving me a gun. And that's probably all I saw. Now, this, this pistol, did it have a holster? It didn't then, but he got a holster for it. What kind of holster was it? It was just a leathery-looking uh, it wasn't a thick leather, very slick, and it didn't have the belt on it. It was just to put the gun in so that he wanted me to keep it in my closet. In our bedroom, his closet was on his side. Mine was on mine. And he kept his three fifty seven Magnum in his and wanted me to keep mine in mine. And I it, never did touch or hold it. I kept mine under my nightstand the, the where 38? no one could see it. You talking about the thirty eight pistol? Uh-huh. And but the the holster was a leather holster? It was. Miss Martha, you said Mr. Roy kept his gun on his side in his closet? In his closet. I, I, when you called law enforcement, you told them this information you're telling us now. Is that right? Yes. I had to look it up because I didn't know. Tell them what you, how you described your closet. <laughs> Fibber McGee's, and you all may not know, it's an old, old cartoon. And if you open your closet door, you're liable to get hit in the head with something. Now let me go back. I, your husband, ma'am, I'm sorry, when did he pass away? 2014. And Mr. Roy got, did he get sick around that time or is it a little before? He, the day that I went to Nashville to schedule my surgery, he had a second stroke. And from that time on, he was either in the hospital or nursing home. And would you have to go to doctor's visits and things around that time too? Mm -hmm. Did, at some point after Mr. Roy passed away, did Melody come up or during that time, was she helping you go to she the doctor's did. appointment? She did. Was she staying with you during these times? She did. Now after Mr. Roy passed away. Tell the jury what you did with with the 357 Magnum pistol, Roy's pistol, and your 38 pistol special. T tell the jury what you did with it. In one of our spare bedrooms, I had a, it wasn't a cedar chest, but it was a chest type that had quilts, sheets, that sort of thing. And I took those guns and put them in the chest there was a TV on top of the chest. I don't remember, but I put a lot of stuff on top of the chest so that it, I didn't think anybody would look in the chest. It was too much trouble. Did you personally put those in there? I did. Just those two guns? Just those. Let me show you some photographs. These have been, this is the first one in Barton 1.1. You recognize, did, did we come up and pick you up to come come to court today? Yes. And did did you, sh were you there when they were able to take some photographs of this? I was. Tell the jury what this is a photograph of. This is a gun safe that we have. And I guess because those guns had been upstairs and we wanted them for my protection, 
I put them in the chest instead of in the gun safe. This is photograph two for you. Did you also give us find some thirty eight special ammunition? I did. Is this the what it, the box that looked like? Yes. Do you remember what all ammunition you you had for the thirty eight special through the years? <laughs> On my shells that were there. It was a box that had a TGY, which is an old, old, I mean, it hadn't been in business forever. And that's where my shells came from, but they weren't there. And this is the shells that they opened up while you were there? Yes. And that's four. And then this is Ms. Barton, M. Barton 5. Those are the, the box of shells? Yes. And Judge, I think I've tendered all those in, but I'm going to tender five in too. All right. Objection? No. So move. Then six, did, did you, Did the 38 special pistol, I'm going to ask you some questions later on, but just right at the moment, did the pistol go missing? It did. Did you start looking for things in your house? I did. How much did you tear your house up and things in the house looking for it? Oh, I, well, I knew that it was only upstairs. And uh, I looked everywhere, the closets, Dressers, chest. Do you have a, uh, how many, you don't have any children, ma'am? I don't. But you have a niece and nephew are close to you? I do. And then, did, is it Jennifer? Yes. Did she encourage you to look before you came down here for us? Yes. Did you go back and look through the house again? We did a complete search. Does Jennifer love you? She does. She want to make sure you look through the house? Yeah. Now she this is... even said, how did you... She called and said, how did you know it was a 38? Well, Roy told me. Now, this is number six for you. It's a photograph of a sock. See that? I do. You know who sock that is? I don't know whose sock it is, I'm sure. It's Roy's. He, there were some shells down in it. And he would, uh, of course he had four limb hunting coats. And hunting, he had a backpack and everything else that you could imagine for hunting. Did you find anything as pockets in the hunting clothing? Yeah, I found that and peppermint and candy. He was so afraid he'd get a coughing spell that he'd always carry peppermint candy with him. Judge, I'm Tim Edmonds, M. Barton 8, which I thought previously to, just for the record. All right, any objections? No, no. All right, move. And, Ms. Martha, this is the sock with the bullets that you found in there? Right. Do you find any other ammunition for a 38 special in your house? No. But you said some were missing? Were, were, some, were some bullets or ammunition missing? Uh, my, that went with my gun. He bought me a box of shells to go with my gun. Okay. And they were missing. <laughs> so it's not those box of... No, because it was... Do you remember the brand of the one? Y, which is a, was in the mall. And he just went there and bought the shells for me, but they weren't there. Do you know what kind, what brand they are? No, I didn't know. Here's, these are, these are the bullets that you found in the sock and then mm -hmm. photograph eight. Mm -hmm. Nine, just the safe again. All right, what is this one? That's a 357 Magnum. 
That's Roy's gun? Yes. Now, in this photograph 11 for you... Oh, no. <laughs> no. All right, I'll, I'll go... You were supposed right, to do a I'm, close Ms. Bar <laughs> Ms. Barla, I went on, I'm on 12 now. I, just tell the jury what that room is. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a junk room? I'm trying to go through and get rid of it. I'm going to have to downsize. And I move things in there. But this is the chest at the end of the bed. Now, I've still got things piled on it, but I had a TV and I don't know what else. I, I would get, um, or I do get, my nephew, Bruce, who is, I mean, he's 59. And, uh, sorry, I told that Bruce. Uh, and then my niece, my, Jennifer, my niece is a little boy, 15. And so he carries things, they both carry things down and carry the goodwill for me. And as we go through this, Tell the jury, this is photograph 13. You, is it correct? You moved your 38 and the 44, your gun and Roy's gun, you put them upstairs in this, in this uh, chest here. Is that right that we see in the photograph? Mm -hmm. Do you remember what year you put those up there? Uh, yes, it was uh, 2019. 2019 that you put them up there? No, it was 2019. No, it was, no, I don't remember exactly. It was after Roy died that um, I put them up there. So it was after 2014 okay. that I put them in there. It was 2019 when I discovered they were missing. Okay, that's what or I want the, to... The 38 was missing. What I want to ask you is, and I'm going to show you a picture. I'm going to go back to it. This is number 13. This is number 14, the photograph. And then, let me back to 14. I'm sorry, Miss Martha. And then, this is 15, just kind of the contents of the chest. As we took them when these were taken recently, right? Yes. After the defendant was arrested in, in 2019, did you go upstairs to do something with the, I guess, TV and other stuff with this chest? We were taking some things to Goodwill. And so we looked in the chest. And at that time, I had quilts and sheets, and I had it down under. and. We would look just the 357 man and was there. You said, was there a, a moment that Melody, before she was arrested, before everything happened with Gary, was there a time that she was at your house and you told her where some things were in your house? I, there were. It, yeah. Yes. Do you remember how you described that to law enforcement, that moment? You said you had a certain type of moment? When I told her? Mm -hmm. Yes, she was there with Ella, her grandchild. And I mentioned some money that I had in a dresser. And that, that it was more or less that if I needed something, those things were there. Did you talk about where your pistols were? I just told them that the pistols were in there. And Melody was that was in that chest. And do you remember what year that was? No. Oh well, yes, it was the year that Emily got married because Ella came up. Now, twenty sixteen. When you told the defendant, do you remember how you described that you had a certain type of moment when you told? I apologize. We told Melody about that. <coughs> well, why did you did you have some hesitation now looking back on when you told her? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Why is that? Well, it's gone. I don't, I don't even know why. Melody and I were very close. She had come and done things for me <coughs> during this period of time. And before that, she was the only child, baby in our family for five years. And my parents divorced when I was in about the seventh grade. And we moved in with uh, my grandparents, who were her great-grandparents. So we had a closer connection because when her mother, grandparents came to see his mother and daddy, we were there. So we were very close. Did you have in a... fact, her grandfather gave me away at my wedding. Now, outside of the defendant, I think you said, Ella, did you tell anybody else where your pistol was? No. No. Specifically in that chest, did you tell no. anybody? No. Did you have a weak moment when you told her where some things were in your house? I did. Why was it weak? <clears throat> well, looking back on it, it was weak. After you were watching Rusty testify, did you hear him and me ask him about guns in your home? Yes. When you heard that, what did you think? Boeing, I hope they... Well, let me ask you this way. Okay. When you heard that, did you start thinking about the gun? I thought you would call me. They... When the two different officers came to question me, they never, well, you heard the tapes, they never asked me if we had any guns. And that was kind of surprising because they knew, seemed to know, you know, about us. But... Uh, no one had asked you about no any one, missing pistols? Uh, after hearing Rusty testify, did anybody know you were calling law No, they didn't. It was, no. I just picked up that, I mean, well, I picked up the candle and... It, was it weighing on you? It had been heavy on my heart. Did you feel like you just had to tell the jury about it? I felt like it was the right thing to do. Judge, you mind just have one more? for the past five years. Oh. You just testified it was 2019. I, yes, from, uh, yeah, when I broke my arm and got out of the, she was arrested when I was, I was broke my arm and foot. I, I just asked you, five years later is the right time. I was trying to figure out how long it'd been. Okay, 2019, yeah. Okay. That's when it's the right time to let people know that the gun was missing. Right? It had... Right? Yes. Okay. It... After you've watched a three-week-long jury trial. I did watch it every day and all of it. Okay, let's go through. Who all did you watch? Did you watch Scott? Part of it. Okay. How about Chris? 
A little bit. Jenna? Who? Jenna? No, I didn't see Emily? That. I saw part of Emily. Uh, how about any of the experts? Dr. Atkinson? <clears throat> Who is he? Medical examiner? I saw part of him. How about the GBI agents that tested the bullets? I may have seen that one. Okay. Um, how about how about Thrasher and all of the forensic people that were at the house? I saw parts of those. Okay. If how about all the photographs? Did you see them putting the, us putting the photographs in? No. Okay. Well, you know, like just like they do here, you didn't see that on your screen. No. Okay. I'm gonna come come back to some of this. So. Uh, in 2018, you were investigated, or not investigated, you were interviewed by law enforcement two separate times, correct? Right. right. That was by TBI agents as well as Detective Hayes and Detective Bowe. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, you recall that during your interview with Detective Hayes, uh, you recall Melody talking to you on July the 5th, right? Yes. What are you looking at? I'm looking at... I just need you to testify for a memory, okay? Oh, okay. If I need to refresh your memory, we will. But you talked to Melody while law enforcement was actually at their house, right? No. They didn't come to my house until after 9 o'clock that night. No, no, I know that. What I'm asking is, is when, they, when law enforcement was at Melody's house, Melody called you on her oh, phone. Oh, from her phone. Correct. Yes. Yeah. That would have been on July the 5th? Yes. Okay. And uh, you told law enforcement uh, that uh, Melody was crying when she spoke to you? Yes. And that, in fact, her world had been turned upside down? That's correct. It had, as far as I was concerned. Now, going to what Melody, Melody never told you, Melody never told you specifically not to talk to the police, right? She said their attorney told her to tell people. She told me that the attorney told. Melanie's never told you anything to tell law enforcement? Oh, no. Okay. Mm -mm. Now, you've known Gary was shot since 2018, correct? And, and she said, yes. Uh, when I... I, I may have known he was shot. Okay. Let me, just because you, you kind of own the fence. I'm just going to show you a little more about the transcript. Now, I'm going to show you, this is not a certified transcript. This was prepared by the district attorney's office. What I want to do, I'll point to a line. Okay. okay. And this is where your testimony was. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do when I show it to you is start reading it out loud. Okay. I just need you to read it to yourself, okay? Right. And you said testimony. This was, is this a preliminary or is this an interview? No, this is an interview. Okay, so it's not testimony. Oh, sorry. Right. I meant transcript. That night. Yes. So, not a certified transcript. So, ma'am, so you see M. Barton, that's you up here. So, if you read from there down to there. Just a month there. Yes, ma'am. So in that interview, you make the statement that uh, at least someone had told you that Gary had been shot in 2018. Right. Okay. Now, do you also recall in that interview, I think Mr. Fogus asked you, did, did they provide you with both of the recordings of your interviews from the TBI and yes. the... Yes. Okay, so you listened to both of those? I did. Do you recall talking with them and telling them where you came up with your own theory about what happened? Did someone who 
come off the road and mm-hmm. yes I someone did. had come off the road and encountered Gary yeah the, okay. to rob something had happened and you also remember telling law enforcement that you didn't think Melody could do this because Gary was her livelihood I'm sorry I'm, it's my voice is starting to go <laughs> out um, you remember stating to law enforcement that you didn't think Melanie could do this because Gary was her livelihood. I didn't. And in fact, you said that Melody uh, did not know if they even had money, right? Melody didn't know how much money she, they had, where it was at, no, anything like she that. she didn't have any control over that. Okay. Melody had nothing in her name. Nothing. Gary controlled all of the money. Right. Okay. And he uh, controlled it with an iron fist somewhat, didn't he, to the best of your knowledge? She was able to buy pretty much what she wanted, but it the cards or whatever she used, the notice went directly to him, and he would know. Yeah, he would know what she was what buying she when she spent. bought. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, moving on from that a little bit, um, you'd also uh, talked about you had a uh, you got a woman that cleans your house, right? I do. Did she still clean your house? No. Was she in 2018? Um, yes, she came while Melanie okay. was there. When, when did she stop cleaning? Just before COVID, she had to have a hip replaced. And then, of course, COVID came, and then she had to have her other hip replaced. Okay. How so often was she at your house? Between 2018 and 2020? Every, the cleaning lady? Every other week. Every other week, so twice a month? Twice. Every, well, every other week. Well, that'd be twice a month, would it? Well, I, guess, I guess it's the same thing said the different ways. Well, she well, just came every other week. Every other it week, okay. Matter. Every other week. Yeah. Um, now, you uh, you have this lady, uh, and you actually told law enforcement that whenever you go into the nursing home, you're taking her with you? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, but you also... She takes care of me. <laughs> but you also had some complaints about her, right? She'd move stuff around when she cleaned. Oh, she redecorated it. <laughs> and she, 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 you said you couldn't even walk around your own house after she got done cleaning? Oh, no, it wasn't that bad. It was just that she would just move. For instance, uh, she comes and decorates for Easter and fall and uh, Christmas and I guess when she came Easter she walked in and she said oh I've decided we're going to move this picture that was in the landing and one that was in the den and she just took it and moved it but she cleaned houses for the wealthy people in Tallahoma. Mm-hmm. They had a lot better taste than I did. And <laughs> okay. she knew, and she I never complained about what she did. Oh, no, I understand. Um, but she did move things around in your house. Uh, just that. And she, she she wasn't in the closet. Uh, well, you also, well, you did state that she likes to get stuff out of the closet, right? No, she didn't get out of the closet. When she first started cleaning, she did a cleaning of the closet, but, oh, she did get my clothes out uh, for me when I, when I broke my arm and foot and sent them to the nursing home, the one uh, she thought I needed to wear, which I ended up wearing. Um, and that, and that, that's fine. Do you I, stay at home with her while while she's cleaning? Oh yeah. Okay. Either uh, Roy Roy was there most of the time. Roy, because I still work. Yeah, you were still working at the bank. Right. Okay. So, well, I, even after Roy passed away in 2014, she continued to be there up until 2020, right? Because mm, you said she yeah. left at COVID. Well, whenever it was. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you also had talked to law enforcement a little bit about uh, there had been a man break into your house. Oh, that or not, was not a like man. 2010. There was a, a boy had broken into your yeah, house. Yeah, that okay. was in 2010. Okay. Um, you also have a niece and nephew. I think your nephew is Jennifer, and I just know your nephew's last name is Brayton. Uh, Bruce. Bruce Brayton? Mm. Okay. Um, 
Now, you talked about Melody had a key to your house. Doesn't um, Jennifer and Bruce have keys to your house? They do. Okay. Who else has keys other than, I assume, the cleaning lady? Did she have a key? Uh, I guess Paula did. Roy was always there. Uh, I don't she may have a key. So let, let's just so in and I'm talking, you know, relevant time periods, 2018, mm -hmm. 2019. So Melody's got a key, cleaning lady may have a key, Jennifer's got a key, Bruce has a key, and there may be other people with keys. No. Well, you're rusty. Rusty's got a key. Uh huh. So at least five people. During all this time, my niece and was not coming to my house. During 2018 to 2019? Okay, but if you weren't there, you wouldn't know if she was there, right? Well, no, I wouldn't know, but she... And I, I was just asking, she does yes. in fact have a key, though? She does. Okay. Yes. Now, I'm going to come back to that. Well, let me just go ahead and ask, um, have you talked to... Because you got down here Wednesday night, right? Right. Did uh, they put you up in a hotel? Oh, they did. did. Did anybody come with you? No. Jennifer didn't come? No. Okay. Bruce didn't come? No. Have you talked to Bruce, um, let's just say, this week? No. Okay. Uh, so you wouldn't know that uh, my office called and spoke to Bruce? No. Okay. Now, the... The bullets that you were talking about, um, sitting way over there, I couldn't hear you. The, the bullets you were saying were missing, not the Winchesters that we have in the box. So can you say it again, what brand those were? I don't know. Or you, you kept saying they were something, and I think there was a store. I, I can't figure out what you were saying. Well, it's no longer a bit. There was a TGNY. TGNY? TGNY. And it had, you know how stores used to put their sticker on you probably don't even know that. <laughs> but yeah. uh, My grandpa owned a Radio Shack, and he used to say Radio Shack and have a price on it. used to, when you went to the store to buy something, well, it had the price. But I remember that this one had TGNY on it. And, uh, and I don't know why I remember that. I never shot the gun. I never handled it that much. I don't. I have a healthy respect for guns because my husband, when he went hunting, it wasn't, I mean, he might go hunting when I was there, but he would like clean or whatever you do to guns the next day. He didn't have the guns out in my presence. I could not tell you, I know he's got a Benelli, but, uh, but I don't know, in that gun that I gave him that was a Remington. Mm. But, uh, in that 357, but now, honest to Pete, if what, I hadn't the, just seen it, I probably wouldn't even know what that thing looked like. The gun? Right? Yeah. That's what you're talking about? You wouldn't know yeah, what it looked like? Yeah, because I didn't. If it were a pair of shoes or a purse, I guarantee you I could tell you. Absolutely. But they didn't interest me. I didn't, I didn't handle them. So I just knew I had one. So you just, put it, you just put it away, put it in your nightstand, well, it got moved around, but eventually you put it in your nightstand drawer and you just went on about your business. It wasn't in the drawer. It was underneath, on the floor. Okay, yeah, yeah underneath. But it was... Stand. My nightstand is where you had to get down under it to slide it in. Now that holster you had talked about, you said it covered the um, the whole gun. Mm -hmm. It did. And well, Allison, can you stand up? Is, is it is it a holster like this? You know that, that the whole gun's in. I can't see that far away. Like that? I can't. Can you see that? No. Can you walk, can you walk up to her, Judge? These glasses are close up. They're not my dish. You don't get to hide over in the corner anymore. 
No, it didn't. No, you could see the end of the gun out of it. Okay. Uh, yeah. It was, I mean, you know, this was old. It wasn't. Well, let me let me do one thing real quick. And Judge. Huh? Yeah, you get a picture. Yeah. yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, we'll just, um, that we had uh, Debbie Allison approach the witness showing her, her holster for her service weapon. Um, and the witnesses or indicated that it did not look like that. No, it didn't look like that. Thank you, ma'am. Now, so it's sometime in 2019 and Melody is arrested and you noticed that the gun is missing, correct? I did. Okay. Um, and you continued to talk to Melody while she was in custody? You all talked on the phone calls? I did. Okay. Uh, you never said anything about a missing gun to Melody? Okay. You no. never called law enforcement and uh, reported this gun stolen? No. Okay. You still have not reported this gun stolen? I, I haven't. And that's another thing that came up that I thought, ooh, I haven't done that. But I couldn't describe it. Yep, you, you can't. But, um, well, I'll get to that in a second. So you actually, you, you can't actually tell the jury what this gun looked like, right? We got to say it out loud because he's got to be able to hear you. Oh, no, I can't describe it. Okay, can't describe it. Uh, but for some reason you remember it's a 38 special? There were other people that I've told that I got a gun for Christmas. And then I've told that I have a 38 special. I mean, I've told that before I found out it was missing to someone. Okay. Uh, well, do you, do you still have a receipt for this gun? No. Do you have any well, I don't even know where he bought it. Do you have any photographs of this gun? No. Now, going to your testimony, because remember beforehand I was asking you about what you had seen. Where are you watching this? You said you watched it on your Kindle, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're watching on the Kindle. Are you watching like YouTube? Like the YouTube app? Well, part of it, sometimes it would come up YouTube, and then part of it was, you could see that symbol, and it was just like... It, it just shows it? Yeah, that's what they zoom into when we're, yeah. we're not in court. But the, the YouTube wasn't like that. It had a little man... Down oh, I, 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 that's what I'm going to get into. I'm going to show you a picture. Okay. okay. So, you have not seen this photograph that I'm going to show you. What, but what I'm going to ask you is, is because you had told law enforcement that there's a man, little man, I think that's what you said, little man in the corner that's got headphones on. Yes. All right. And I'm just going to show you and see if, if this is the man that you saw. No. That is oh, him? this. Yes. Yes, this is a man. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's rusty. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and so we'll, we'll just perfect the record, okay? Okay. So this is the man in the lower right corner of what I'm going to call Barton Defense 1. Okay. And is that correct? Yes. That is the man that you watched? Yes. And the other man is, that's Rusty Barton. Right. Okay. And you're, well, you're watching it. Are you kind of familiar with YouTube? No. Does this kind of look like what you see when you watch it on Kindle? Uh-huh. It does? All right. And Judge, at this point in time, we move in. Uh, Barton Defense Number One. All right, I stipulate you. All right, submit. We switch it over to the Illinois Judge on Public. It's on. It is. Oh, sorry. So. So, so ma'am, this is yet again. Your this is what you're watching, right? Mm-hmm. And when Rusty was testifying. Yes. Now, did you watch Scott, Chris, Jen, or any of those people uh, on this same uh, YouTube channel? I don't know. Uh, sometimes it came up where I could see the judge and that symbol back there. And sometimes I would get it on this. I'm not real computer. computer I'm not a guru on this. And that's perfectly fine. But one thing I want to talk about is that little man in the corner there, and so the jurors know and they can see it, that this is a YouTube channel called Recovery Addict. Were you aware of that? No. Okay. And it's that little man in the corner with the headset that is the one who told you, quote, that's where she got the gun. I heard him say that. Yeah, and that's where you got the idea. No. 
Well, that's when you called law enforcement, wasn't it? No. Actually, the next day. I, it may have been the next day, but I thought they will realize that, that they'll hear it. I thought you all would pick up on that. Well, did you, did you see on there on um, that exhibit where it says, did I crack the case? Where it says what? Oh, yeah, I see that. Now. Okay. And do uh, you know that that man is now claiming that he's the one that solved this because he gave you the idea? <laughs> well, he didn't. Well, you would agree with me, though, that on this timeline, you're sitting at your house in Tallahassee, Tennessee, and you're watching Rusty testify with that man giving commentary, correct? I do. And that man made the statement on his YouTube channel, quote, that's where she got the gun, right? I heard that. And the next day at 9 o'clock in the morning, you call Captain Hands at the sheriff's office. Correct? I did. But... And... Judge, let me just ask Mr. Ray. That, that was not, there was no explanation needed. I'll let you redirect. Go ahead. And... That is the first time since July of July fifth, two thousand eighteen, that you have ever told anyone about a missing thirty-eight. Was to Captain Hams. Oh. Uh, no. Who else have you told? I have, she's not a family, she's a very good friend that I told. I don't want to get her involved. Okay, so you claim, when did you tell this supposed person? It's probably been over a year ago. Okay. That this was on my heart and I felt like I should let somebody know. Okay, so you just let this anonymous person know, right? She's not anonymous to me. Not, well, how about, why don't you, not if, okay, you, you've got a gun missing, and obviously you're trying to imply that Melody took this gun and those bullets and that's what she used to kill Gary. So that's important, right? You would agree with me. Oh, right. It's, it's super important. Right? Very important. But what's your excuse to this jury is, is nobody's ever asked you. Right? That's what you told Mr. Fogans. Law enforcement never asked you in 2018. They didn't ask me. But you didn't know the gun was missing, but so I there was know. no reason to ask you. Right? Well, they didn't ask me if I had a gun. If we had guns. But the point is, in 2019, after Melody is arrested, you know it's missing. Right? And you don't say a word. I could tell you why I looked. No, no. I'm just asking you. I, you didn't I say a word. You don't want to know. You didn't say a word to anybody about this missing gun until Friday of last week, right? Well, I have discussed it, but with one person. Well, let's let's go ahead and get into that. Now, you claim that you did not know about the affair between Rusty and Melody, no, right? I didn't. No, I didn't know. Well, about the affair. What did you know? You told Mr. Bogus you didn't know. Judge, I'm going to object and ask Mr. Ray under 611, 623. She is 84. I ask him to slow down and ask the questions appropriately. He's, he got her on cross about the keys inappropriate office. Slow him down. Ms. Barton, you testified with Mr. Fogus you didn't know. And so I just asked you if you knew, and you said no well. So did you know or did you not? I did not know the affair was going on. Okay. Well, what, what else were you going to say? that I knew that they talked too much, and I talked to Melody about that. That you thought they talked too much? Mm -hmm. Okay. That she was still a married woman. And obviously, um, you're not, if this is, in fact, the first time that you learned about the affair, you learned about it while your stepson was testifying on live TV, right? Unfortunately, and along does, with does the little man that you watch that makes these comments during the trial that you're watching, did he ever say anything about the affair that you recall? No. 
No. Yeah, you, yes, uh, yes or no, sorry. So, so in front of live television is when you learn that your stepson and technically your second cousin are having an extramarital affair, right? Yes. And you recall um, talking with Detective Hand, telling him uh, about how embarrassed you are about it? I am. And that I think you actually said that you can't even hang your head up in, tennis, in Tullahoma anymore, right? Hold it up. Hold, yeah, you can't hold your head up in Tullahoma anymore, right? That Rusty and Melody have destroyed the Barton name. You recall that? I do. Now, with your um, niece and all of them, or let me ask it this way first off. Do you, um, have you had any communication with Scott and Chris? No. And that would be since, let's just say since 2018? Since 2018, yeah. You have? I haven't. You have not? Okay. No. Do you know is, uh, if your niece, uh, Jennifer, she's had any uh, contact with I Scott and Chris? I do not know. Okay. Um, and Rusty's your stepson, right? Right. But you're 13 years apart? Right, because I think he said he's 71 and you're 84. Well, he is, yeah. Okay. Uh, but I never thought. So was Roy much older than you? He was seven years. Seven years older than you? Okay. And you don't have any biological children, correct? No. All right, uh, but you recall talking with Sergeant, or I'm sorry, Captain Hand. And it is Captain yeah, Captain Hand, um, talking to him um, and telling him that basically you're not happy that Melody's throwing Scott under the bus was a paraphrase of what you said, right? I wasn't. You weren't? Because in your opinion, even though I know you don't have any biological children, but uh, you were very close with Kay, I believe, right? right? And y'all talked about a mother should always protect her children, correct? Right. And that a mother should do anything to protect her children. I believe that. You believe that. And it made you sick. To see Melody blaming Scott and Chris, didn't it? It did. Okay. And then... After the fact. What, after the fact after the man I told you that the... More. The gun? Yeah. So when you... So that's exactly it. So you're watching this trial, I, and Melody is disgusting you. You found out about an affair. You've seen her blame Scott. Well, you hadn't seen her. You've seen me and John Luke blaming Scott and Chris. In proper form, he's not asking questions. That's fine. He's trying to get to I'm it. trying to get it's to it. It's not a question, Your Honor. It is just a long question. So now i got to start over. Correct. Lost my rhythm. So you have sat here, and you saw me and John Luke blaming Scott and Chris, right? I'll break it up. Because you watched the trial, right? Right. And you saw us blaming him. You saw Scott come in claiming that he found a gun, right? I did, but I already knew that. Who, who told you that? Melody had told me that he had found the gun before mm -hmm. all of this happened. Yeah. And the, um, I lost my train of thought. Um, you find out about the affair, right? Mm -hmm. I did. So, and then, um, then you see me and John Luke blaming Scott and Chris, right? Or it's technically going on all at the same time. I, I've seen that. And for you, that's just not good, correct? You can't have a mother blaming her sons, right? Because you just said you mother should always protect Judge, her children. I'm going to judge. He's asked three questions and has not given her an opportunity to answer. He okay. has got to let her answer on 611, 623. That was one. He one was three questions. They didn't let her answer. I just asked him to give an answer. He's trying to get her to answer. He Go ahead. has to let, give an opportunity to answer the question. She hasn't answered yet. He hasn't let her. I don't, I, don't so, think, I don't think that's exactly what's going on. Keep going, Mr. Wright. Thank you, Judge. All right, so we'll just back up just a little bit, okay? So when you're seeing this, you're disgusted with Melody, right? Especially once you learn you about the affair. You won't let me tell what really happened. So. No, I'm just asking you, were you, when you learned about the affair and the fact that you already knew she was blaming Scott and Chris, you were disgusted with Melody. Yes or no? I was already disgusted. Not because 
I knew the gun was missing. But you still didn't tell anybody? No, I didn't. I... Do you have any proof whatsoever that your husband ever even bought you a thirty-eight? I don't have a receipt or anything like that. In fact, in 79, you didn't have, to, I'm sure you didn't have to register a gun. I don't even know if he went to, and which I'm sure he did, but he could have bought it off of somebody. I do not know if it were new. I don't, you, if you he hadn't told me what it was, but I know I had a gun then, and I know I don't have a gun now. Okay. And you have bullets for it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, since you've watched the trial, tell me who else doesn't supposedly have a thirty-eight, but they got bullets for it? Do you know? No. You weren't watching when we had tendered in um, somewhere up here. The bullets found in Scott Ferris' barn and bedroom? No. That there were thirty-eight special no. bullets? I, d I told you, you I did weren't... not see all the trial. Okay. If you had to guess, have you watched half of it? No. More than half? No, not half of it. Just one second, Judge. I got nothing. Mr. Focus? Just have something I think we need to take up outside the prison. Just very quickly. It shouldn't take too long. All right, y'all step out for a minute. Mm -hmm. Does the witness need to step out? Let me uh, let things settle down and I'll come back. What we want to do is outside the presence of the jury, because I don't know the answer to this, is uh, at least two times when Mr. Ray was asking you questions and you responded by saying you don't want to know what the answer is, tell me what that answer is. When I broke my arm and foot and I was in <clears throat> NHC, that's when Melody, Melody came up there, and that's when she was arrested. Rusty came in and told me that afternoon that they had arrested her and that uh, Gary was shot with a gun, he said, just like, uh, with a thirty eight, and you have both of those guns. I did not know that a 357, well, I said, what? Two guns, because it just floored me. And uh, I said, what two guns? And he said, you're 38 in the 357 Magnum would shoot a 38. 
So then, that was in July. So I think it was Labor Day weekend that we looked in that chest and I found that my 38 was gone. And ever since then, this has weighed heavily, heavily on me. Just one, just one. What's fence No, I, I was just checking I mean, what you're saying. This is a story that supposedly Rusty came in and said, so that would be hearsay. They want to recall Rusty. Uh, then they can ask Rusty if this conversation happened. Or they can ask her if they had a, if she had a conversation with Rusty after or around the time of Melody was arrested. But regarding this whole testament uh, about these guns from Rusty, we hadn't heard that before. And we hadn't heard it from this witness before either. <clears throat> Judge, I just have one more? Ms. Moore was with us yesterday. I don't remember her telling us this yesterday. Ms. Moore said that she did. I remember her saying that the 57, that a, uh, the 44 manual can shoot, or 357, excuse me, 357 can shoot at 38. But Ms. Moore said that she did tell us this part. Well, uh, but that's, that's it, Judge. That's all I wanted to, the statement from the, from this witness is that Rusty told her some things. Now those would be hearsay. You can ask her if she had a conversation with Rusty and did he talk to her about the shooting and then what she did after that. Okay. She can say that's when I went and looked. But not the contents of what he said. Correct. Right. And then if you want to get into the content of what he said that would then it still would be hearsay even if Rusty come if y'all brought Rusty back in to testify to it. But if but may oh, I no, say you don't you don't say anything yet. Um, but you can you can ask her if she was informed by Rusty about the three fifty seven being able to shoot the thirty eight. That's not being offered for the truth of that. It's, her state of mind. it's just right. Yes, and and also since we got the jury out, there was. I'm going to ask about. We sent you the summary. Mr. Morris. Mr. Morris. Just heard about. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, if, you, if you're just going to ask her, be like, didn't you tell Kay that the gun right. was missing? And then I'm going to stand up and I go, that's weird. You told the only person that's dead. All right. All right. <coughs> I'm right, Judge. Okay. All right, bring him back in.
don't slide behind you because there's a water. So, okay. So I'm going to pour me some of these in. What is what is your bottle? What is what? Your bottle. All right, uh, let's get. All right, Mr. Focus, you can continue. Thank you, Miss Martha. I'm almost done. I have a couple questions. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I didn't know if it was this or. That's all right. Now, at some point after Melody was arrested. You can't tell me what he said, but did you talk to Rusty about the guns? Yes. And after he, did he, don't tell me what he said, but did you explain to him about where they were or how they went missing? No. Did he say something to you? Don't tell me what he said, but didn't Rusty talk to you about uh, He did not? say something to me. And it was it. At, at that time, did you then learn whether or not a 357 could shoot a 38? I did. Okay. And you hadn't known before that? No. Was it at that point that things, other things started going off in your mind or thinking about connecting the dots or things like that? It did. Now, don't tell me her full name because I know she's a friend. I don't want get involved per se, but tell the jury, the lady that cleans your house, what's her first name? Oh, Polly. What's her first name? I'm sorry, I didn't. Polly. Now, is she, how long has she been cleaning the house for you? Oh, well now, probably, because she had cleaned about 30 years when she quit. Okay. But she didn't quit. Do you I mean, like, she comes out and helps me decorate. Or she comes out and decorates. And she can't watch this. <laughs> is it Miss Polly, is that? Polly. Okay, I'm calling her Miss Polly. Yeah, that's fine. Do you consider Miss Polly someone that is a friend of yours? I do. Do you trust Miss Polly? Absolutely. Would she steal from you? No. Now, the fence also asked you about a kid that broke into your house one time. You remember that? I do. How long ago was that? That was in about 2010. And did that or did not, inv not involve some glass jars or change? It, it didn't. Um, I had several in my closet, uh -huh. and he didn't take any of those. Did you have any connection with that child or teenager since 2010? No. Would you have any evidence that he's ever come into your house and stole your 38 Special Revolver? No, he wouldn't. No. Now he went to prison. Do you know where he went? Well, I'll let defense ask you that. Was he local? He was. Drugs. Drugs. Um, but had you ever seen him on your property? or anywhere upstairs in your upstairs bedroom going through your, or getting into your chest where those two guns, only those two guns were? No. Ms. Martha, I'm almost done. Now, counsel asked you whether or not you told anybody about the gun. You, didn't, you said you told a friend. But did you tell Kay Walker anything about the gun? I didn't tell her about the gun. I told her that I had had 
Bruce to come out and take some things to Goodwill and that we had gotten in that chest. But I didn't, she didn't even know the guns were in there. She probably didn't even know I had the gun. But she told Miss Kay about the chest and things missing from the chest? No, that we had been in it. Oh, okay. And around that time, were you talking to the defendant uh, on the phone? No, I think. I think when I told Kay that, that she had been released and I wasn't able to contact her, but Kay was talking to her. Well, after you talked to Kay about the chest, did Melody stop saying something to you? Oh, that's right. She, I did talk to her because she never told me she loved me again. Nothing further, on. Ma'am, uh, did you also learn that a 357 can shoot a 38 special from watching the trial? No. You didn't hear us talking about that in, in the trial? No. All right. <clears throat> Going to the neighbor that uh, Mr. Fogus was asking you about, or the boy that went to prison, mm -hmm. that guy, he's actually your neighbor, right? He, he was. He was. And um, uh, the, your house, it's, it's fairly far off the road, correct? It is. So, I mean... You got a really long driveway. You can't really see your house even from the road. Oh yes, you can see it. You can see it because I just had to look at it on Google Street View, and it's pretty good distance, though, right? It is. Okay, uh, but this boy that went to prison that had previously broken into your house—he's um, a neighbor. He—he he was a neighbor, but he doesn't even come over to his parents' house anymore. Yeah, anymore. Is that because he's in prison or? He just doesn't come no, over No, he's anymore. out of prison. Okay, now. he's out of prison. Okay, all right, no further questions. Thank you. Anything else? One second, Judge. question. Sometimes people have to help me. I forget things. After um, the break-in with the, the neighbor, the young kid or the teenager, however he mm -hmm. was, uh, did you check to see if your guns were missing? Yes, we did. They weren't. They were still yes, there? They weren't missing. The jars of coins weren't missing. He took a lot of my jewelry. But your your pistol was still there? Oh, yes. That's all, Judge. Last chance. All right. Anything else? We ask that you be released. All right, uh, we're going to break for lunch. Anything else we need to take up? No, she just needs to remain for just a moment if we could. All right. All right, uh, we'll break for lunch. I'm going to give you all uh, an hour and a half. We'll uh, start back at 3.